Välkomna i La Holm. Welcome to La Holm. Yes. Welcome to our Passive House and Sustainability Conference 2019. And uh, of course, it was not so easy to organize this conference somewhere in nowhere, we maybe think. But why we aren't in Stockholm, in Berlin, or in Malmö, why we are in La Holm? Because we want to have this conference in a real passive house. And here we are, in La Holm. So today and tomorrow, we have a unique program about sustainable building, about sustainable life, about us and what we can and what we have to do to stop the decay of our planet. 50 national and international speakers are in La Holm and will give you power and courage, knowledge and experience and a lot of new solutions. Besonders freue ich mich über die Gäste aus Deutschland. Einen der Erfinder der Passivhauses, Wolfgang Feist, den Nachhaltigkeitsarchitekten Helmut Krabmeier, Ralf Bermich und viele, viele mehr. Mit dem Zug sind sie viele hunderte Kilometer gefahren, um die nächsten beiden Tage zu inspirieren und zu motivieren. Men såklart behöver vi inte bara titta utanför gränserna. Vi har fantastiska föreläsare här från Sverige också. Hållbarhetsexperterna, och jag kan inte nämna alla namn, men jag är jätteglad att ni är här och kommer att vara med oss de nästa dagarna. Välkomna! Jag vill också like to address a special welcome to Nick from UK. It's so nice that you are with us in the European Passive House Union. <laughs> Then some headlines we will show you just quickly. Energy efficient as a key to a sustainable future. Och så klart ska vi prata om Greta idag också. Vi behöver nämligen en i byggbranschen, säger Ingrid. Or do you look at a wild bird and think it looks too functional? Vi ska prata om klimatneutrala stormarknader. Oh, I take a long one. City development in passive house standard, concept, quality assurance, monitoring and experience from the largest passive house district. And to add a man for seal free first school, hoppe de er boy. And I take my own. <laughs> Seek passive houses and carbon dioxide, a good combination. But most important for me are you exhibitors thank you so much that you are here because without you we can't build any energy efficient houses we can't save the climate because we need your development and uh, 40 exhibitors from 10 countries are here today and tomorrow to show the newest solution and sustainable components thank you so much and i'll recommend And I recommend all the participants in your breaks use the time and come over to the exhibition and visit them. And finally, nobody can do everything, but everyone can do something. And we wish you many inspirations now and interesting discussions. And of course, a great time in La Holm. Vår tid är nu. Our time are now. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, well, energy efficiency. Well, I won't talk much about uh, the problems, uh, but we all know we are there. We have climate change, there's no question about it. It's the greenhouse gases, especially uh, carbon dioxide. It's an existential problem, not for the planet, but for human civilization. And we have to get it done, and we can still limit that to an acceptable level. These four 
uh, topics. This is just a short review of what the IPCC, the International Panel on Climate Change, says. And I add a fifth one, uh, that is, it will not go by its own. We'll have to be actively working to solve uh, the problem. Well, um, when you look in scientific literature, you'll find a lot of, mop, aha, it's not changing here. Um, you find a lot of um, information about uh, what is going on in our environment. And that was from the May uh, title of Spectrum. Uh, we have a significant loss of insects, 75% minus in the last 30 years. And the causes are, as you see, a lot of causes, but one cause also is climate change. Um, just this is a serious problem, as you can think, and we have a lot of our ones, extreme weather, ocean levels, acidification. So, uh, yes, we have to do something about it, and, okay, this way. Uh, and this is a um, graph that you know uh, it has been lately in a lot of publications, but when I see that kind of graph, for me, this is frightening. Because uh, I have learned as a physicist to read these graphs, so I feel from my heart what's in that graph. And that is, there are two d disastrous paths. The first disastrous path is uh, the path up here. Uh, the growing emissions, which will be uh, disastrous for civilization. But also, if I look at these reduction paths, and I see this very steep development, I don't know whether any of you have ever read Dennis Meadows' Limits to Growth. And when you go through that book, you will see lots of these kinds of developments. And those are the catastrophic ones because that's far too fast for a decent human society to cope with. So this won't work, and of course the other one doesn't work also. So we have not much time left to go on a decent path which can still be dealt with in a human society without war and without violence. That's the problem. Can we do that? Well. Yes, we can, and this is a publication of Ernst Ulrich von Weizsäcker. He was at the uh, conference in Garbedien also, and has spoken about this. It's available in a lot of languages. Well, I, I didn't look whether it's available in Swedish, but it's not necessary. I know all people in Sweden speak very good English, much better than we do in Germany. Uh, come on, uh, that's about how we can manage it. And uh, what will not work, it's the extremes. The business as usual, of course, will not work. And also a fast total emission stop will not work. So what we have to do is we need real change. We need to have a decisive decision about that. We have to do everything doable. I'll explain that a little bit. And that's more than just passive houses. We have a transformation of the whole energy system, which will have to happen in the next few decades. Well, uh, first uh, boundary condition here is uh, the development of the world's economy. So that was the development in the past, the world's gross product. And what you, hear, what you see here, it's growing. And, but the interesting fact is what you don't hear from most of the economists, and what you also don't hear from lots of the environmentalists. There is growth, but the growth is not exponential, what you see here. It can be approximated almost uh, with a 98% uh, uh, cross-relation uh, as a linear growth. It's an important thing to note. There is no exponential growth worldwide. On the, on the side of the economy. And that's despite of the fact that all the governments try to induce growth as good as they can. 
but they just succeed to have linear growth. Yeah, that's interesting. Interesting to see. Yeah, so this is one of the uh, conditions from the past. Maybe it will have to change in the future. And but you also see it's very difficult to change that. So now that's a diagram on uh, how the carbon dioxide emissions uh, have been raising. So this again would be if the carbon dioxide emissions would grow like the world gross product. So, but it's not. It's not. That's also very interesting. Uh, the, the, the growth of the emissions, the use, total use of uh, fossil fuel, is growing with approximately a third of the rate of the general economic growth. It's quite interesting. So, and the, the difference between the two, that is the conventional improvement of energy efficiency and of economic efficiency. So we are already quite successfully doing it, not in a completely, uh, completely uh, satisfying way, it's not enough, but we are doing it. So this is the contribution of energy efficiency nowadays um, uh, compared to uh, 1980. So it's about half of the growth uh, we don't do with using additional energy, additional uh, fossil fuel, we do just by improving efficiency. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as already mentioned, um, Vorarlberg is uh, one of the nine provinces of Austria. It has no university, it has um, no, nothing really, research facil facilities, there's nothing. Uh, it has also no nuclear power and no gas power, no coal power, only hydropower. Nevertheless, um, uh, we did uh, try to become um, energy neutral because, of course, our, our cars and our houses are heated by ice and coal. So, <clears throat> The Energy uh, uh, Institute's mission statement always was we advise, educate and research for sensible energy, not for energy efficiency, that's funny, for sensible energy use and renewable energy sources. The meaning of that is you would now call it sufficiency, sensible energy use. It doesn't make sense to take the car to buy some cigarettes around the corner. Uh, <clears throat> but of course we're also dealing with energy efficiency. So, in 1990, um, uh, I started working as a head of solar architecture in uh, the Energy Institute and I was asked to recommend uh, the best building concept for housing subsidies. So, therefore, I visited the most interesting buildings at that time being researched in Germany, Switzerland and Austria. I found about four or five of them. And I was at the passive house, at the hall of the passive house. There was no passive house, there was just the hall and the concept. There were some other buildings in Switzerland too, which were very interesting, uh, <clears throat> heated and cooled by 100% of solar energy. But I was waiting for about two years to get the real results, also the economic results. And then we decided on the Energy Institute that it would be the passive house that would be suitable for the province because we are not that rich. And we thought we have to have something that is suitable for a quite a small and uh, poor country. So uh, these careful uh, analyses of the economic situation led to our decision to become passive house. Now, at first, I will show you the result of this project, which is a simple social building. So it is for people who have a very, very low income. Uh, now, the project... Um, <clears throat> Uh, the Austrian region of Fahlberg um, was one of the pioneers uh, in, the, in, in, the, in the introduction of the passive house standard in Europe. First projects were realized in 1996, and as the standard proved to be very successful in research projects, it was introduced in 2008 as a regional minimum requirement for social housing. From about 2010 onwards, uh, <clears throat> criticism of this measure was increasingly voiced. The points of criticism were high additional costs and energy consumptions exceeding the calculated energy demands. 
That was done by the Chamber of uh, the Workers, it was done by the Chamber of Commerce, it was done by the architects, it was done by the builders. They were fighting against the rule to have passive house as a standard. The fact and the truth is that some architects and some builders planned and built apartment houses. Yes, of course, that's what they do. They called them passive house, but they were not passive houses. Uh, although neither certified uh, nor quality assured. So that was really a problem. In the design phase, calculations for the energy demand were done not with the PHPP, but with our national program, which is about half of that what PHPP would call. So they would design it for 15 kilowatt hours, but in reality, with the PHPP, you would come to 30. So these were the problems. In response to this criticism, the Energy Institute conceived the research project Cleanable, um, and the project aims were uh, to quantify the influence of the energy level of the investment and life cycle costs, the monitoring of the thermal comfort, the air quality, and the energy consumption, and developing a method for the energy economic uh, invariance uh, representing different energy concepts. So, <clears throat> Uh, this was the reason how and why we did it. In order to do it in a good way, um, cleanable, by the way, is an abbreviation. The full text in English would mean climate neutral sustainable residential building. Uh, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> in order to do that, we had at first uh, to find the best solution for a building design to, to be optimized energetically and economically in the first step. Then you have numerous variants to be planned and according to these parameters. C, you have for these variants the heating demand has to be calculated with PHPP. Uh, then to be able to, to have the calculation of the costs, you have to make a call for tender for all these different variants. And finally, then the, uh, the results can be analyzed uh, on a life cycle basis. Uh, so, that was uh, the reason. You can see it, was, um, it has 19 flats. The size of the flats is 53 and 76 square meters. It's 1,400 square meters according to the PHPP area. And it's the net dwelling area of 1,281. Uh, now, you can see um, <clears throat> these are the variants that arouse when you make it quite clearly. Uh, you have the envelope either in passive house quality or according to the building standard in Vorarlberg. So you have already two variants. Then you have to decide which construction type. Is it timber? Is it hybrid? Is it thermal brick? Is it brick with uh, <coughs> insulation on top? So you have eight variants. You have three window types, 24 variants. Shadowing, no or partial or full, 72 variants. So that goes on and on and on. Uh, you come to the ventilation, you come to the heating and the HVC system, the heat distribution, the heat supply, the solar heat, the photovoltaics. You come up to 147,456 variants. Now calculate that with the PHPP and make a call for tender, which is not possible.